And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and I am going through all of the sets, picking out the top 10 cards from each one for the Commander format. Today, I'm talking about Saviors of Kamigawa, finishing off the Kamigawa block. And again, not the best set ever for Commander. That's why, kind of why I like going through these sets, is some of these sets are fantastic for Commander, like Champions of Kamigawa, I think, is a fantastic Commander set. Betrayers of Kamigawa, not so much, and Saviors of Kamigawa, not so much much i did have to go pretty deep here i'd say this one is a little bit better than betrayers of kamigawa so starting out at number 10 choice of damnations five and a black arcane sorcery target opponent chooses a number you may have that player lose that much life if you don't that player sacrifices all but that many permanents this is just a really great card in a commander game i actually talked about it quite a bit on my 10 cards video and a lot of my patrons end up throwing this card in their decks just because it's a fun card in a commander game and and it's funny when i did this on my 10 cards video a lot of people misunderstood how this card works they're like this card's terrible your opponent can just pick one and sacrifice one permanent no 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 that player sacrifices all but that many permanents so if they chose one they would have to sacrifice all their permanents except for one thing right that's what makes this card a really interesting one and choice of damnations is absolutely the case later in a game is where this card really gets good because your opponent has less life and more permanents Remember, you get to choose whether they're losing the life or sacrificing the permanence. Later in a game when your opponent is low on life and they have like 20 permanents in play, what number are they going to pick, right? If that's you and you get the choice of damnations, you have 20 permanents in play, what number do you pick? It's tough. Coming in at number 9, Cami of the Crescent Moon. Blue and a blue, legendary creature, spirit, 1-3. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. So, of course, this is a commander and as I've mentioned, Kamigawa has the I think fourth most legendary creatures of any set. It was a very legendary creature heavy set. Just a legendary theme in general in that block. So of course we're going to see legendary creatures on this list. Yes, this does make for an interesting commander, but also in the 99, it is a howling mine effect, right? And of course when this card came out, it was used a lot because we had never seen another howling mine type of effect, especially just for two mana, right? And that's sort of what makes this card a lot more usable is it's only two mana, just like howling mine. So not a super great card, but it certainly is a card that sees a lot of play in the commander format if you want most draw triggers for yourself or if you're just playing that hug deck of course this is a guy that's going to go in there coming in at number eight pain's reward two and a black sorcery each player may bid life you start the bidding with a bid of any number in turn order each player may top the high bid the bidding ends when the high bid stands the high bidder loses life equal to the high bid and draws four cards so that's a whole lot of words there but basically you are casting this spell everyone's going to bid life whoever bids the most amount of life pays that life and gets to draw four cards i love this card in a commander game you could just throw this in any deck and just have your opponents bidding lots of life it plays into their greed right like how much life is someone gonna pay in order to draw four cards i know people will think it's a really bad idea to pay three mana to have your opponent draw four cards but if they're gonna pay 10 life i don't know that seems like it might be worth it especially again later in a game later in the game this card's fantastic because your opponents are probably desperate for cards but don't have a lot of life so that's where it can get really interesting in particular i like this card in a deck where you want your opponent to lose life of course every deck wants your opponents to lose life but in particular there are commanders that really really want your opponents to lose life to get other benefits so it's a great fit in a deck like that coming in at number seven enduring ideal five white white sorcery search your library for an enchantment card put it onto the battlefield then shuffle and it has the epic mechanic which of course we only saw in this set for the rest of the game you can't cast spells at the beginning of each of your upkeeps copy this spell except for its epic ability so basically you cast this spell rest of the game you can't cast spells which really sucks but on your upkeep you will get to cast your enduring ideal again and again and again so of course you really have to plan around this card and that's why i love it and of course there is other epic cards there's one of each mono color i chose enduring ideal to be the best because i think is the best build around in the commander format right again i'm talking about these cards with regards to the commander format and this is the one that i think is best in the commander format to actually build your deck around i've seen a few people build their deck around this card of course you can just do an enchantment tribal deck have your enduring ideal in your hand and just cast it when you think you're in the right moment right you just wait for the right moment then you cast it and then you can really start going off of course there's a lot of really powerful enchantments in this format so it's very easy to close out a game with a card like this it's a great card to build your deck around 
Coming in at number six is another legendary creature, Machiko Kanda Truth Seeker. Three and a white human advisor, 2 2. Whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you, that player sacrifices a permanent. So, again, we can build our deck around this, and I have done this on my Underwhelming Commander series. I actually think it's a great commander, and the reason why is because it has a phenomenal ability. Just whenever any source an opponent controls deals damage to you, that player sacrifices a permanent. That's pretty good. You could put this in the 99 of any deck, and it's just going to deter your opponents from having having to do damage to you. They're probably likely not going to want to attack you because they don't want to sacrifice stuff. But where it really goes to town is against something like that Perforos deck, right? Perforos is a source. An opponent controls that's dealing damage to you. So whenever their commander triggers and deals two damage to you, they're going to have to sacrifice a permanent. So it can really shut down a lot of decks. It's just a really great card that you can throw in the 99 of any deck. Coming in at number five is Mikukoro, Center of the Sea, Legendary Land, tapped at a colorless and pay two and tap each player draws a card. So this is one of those cards that you wouldn't think is particularly that great. I mean, you're paying two mana and tapping land to make everyone draw one. Doesn't seem very good. Letting your opponents draw doesn't seem very good. This is currently in over 24,000 decks on EDH Rec. People really like this card. This has been a commander staple since pretty much the beginnings of the format. People really like this in the format for a number of reasons. First of all, obviously, it can be played in that hug deck again. It is also a colorless draw option if you are really stuck with drawing in your deck. I don't know if this is that much of a situation anymore, but it is a draw option for you on a land, which you don't really see. So sometimes it will be used for that. But what makes this card particularly interesting is it is a forced draw, right? Each player draws a card, which means your opponents do not have the option to not draw. If you tap this for its ability, you're forcing your opponents to draw, which of course can be really good in a lot of decks, right? There's a lot of decks out there that want your opponents to be drawing there's a lot of decks out there that want your opponents to have a full hand so this actually does fit really well with a lot of commanders and it does see a fair amount of play in the format coming in at number four freed from the real two in a blue enchantment aura enchant creature pay blue tap enchanted creature pay blue untap enchanted creature so this is one of those cards that just completely flew under the radar when the set came out nobody really thought about it it is a versatile card but very quickly this card became a combo crazy card because of what's doing and that's why i gotta give it a mention this card goes infinite with a couple of different commanders in the format right any commander that is adding two mana and one of that mana is blue you can go infinite because of course you can tap it for two mana use one of the mana you just added to untap your commander and then do it again that is where this card typically sees play it gets played in the format a lot for that reason so i do have to give it a mention just because it is a combo piece that gets used a lot in the format Coming in at number three, Kataki Wars Wage. And like I said, very legendary creature heavy set. All three cards on the top of this list are legendary creatures. One in a white, Spirit 2-1, all artifacts have. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this artifact unless you pay one. So it is that very staxy or taxi effect for hating on artifacts. And again, you can use this as your commander. Again, I did this on my Underwhelming Commander series. So you can check that out. There are a lot of underwhelming or at least un popular commanders from the Kamigawa block. I don't think this is an underwhelming commander. It's got a great ability. It is more just an unpopular one. I mean, of course, you can put this in any stacks or tax theme just to tax your opponent's mana, right? Force them to tap down their mana so that they can keep their artifacts. And then, of course, they can't use their mana for other stuff. That's the whole idea behind a tax strategy. You're just putting pressure on your opponent's mana, forcing them to do other stuff with it so that they can't move forward their game plan. But also, you can just throw this in any deck where you don't really have any artifacts right if you're building a deck that's in white and you notice hey i'm not really using a lot of artifacts here maybe you're in a selesnia deck that's white and green and you don't have a lot of mana rocks because you have that green ramp just throw a kataki wars wage in there i promise you your opponents will be punished for it and again all those treasure tokens all those clue tokens right this is a card that has gotten a lot better in the last few years with the uptick in those artifact tokens that we've seen in the format so might want to give this guy consideration in one of your decks Coming in at number two is Sakashima the Imposter. Two blue blue human rogue, three one. You may have Sakashima the Imposter enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except its name is Sakashima the Imposter. It's legendary in addition to its other types and it has two blue blue return this creature owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So this was the best clone in the entire game for a long, long time. They now have the new Sakashima, of course, which is maybe better. You could still debate it. 
what made Sakashima the imposter so good, what still makes it so good is it has its own name still, right? So the legend rule doesn't apply, right? It doesn't say that on the card, so you might miss that when you look at this card. But when Sakashima enters the battlefield, it can copy a legendary creature like, say, your commander, but its name is still Sakashima the imposter, so the legend rule doesn't apply, right? What the legend rule is looking for is cards that are legendary with the same name. Sakashima the imposter will not have the same name as that Elish Norn that you are copying. Gonna have its own name, so the legend rule doesn't apply. That's what makes this a great clone, is the ability to copy legendary stuff. And then of course, you have the ability to return it to your hand if you want to use it to copy something else. Really one of the best clones in the game. Fantastic option there if you're looking for something to copy your commander or just a clone effect in general. Coming in at number one though for me, and this is a tough one to figure out what's number one, what's the best card in commander from this set. I ended up picking this one, Rune Tail Kitsune Ascendant, two and a white legendary creature fox monk. So again, this can be your commander if you want to and has a fantastic ability in the commander format. And that's why I picked it at number one. When you have 30 or more life, flip Rune Tail Kitsune Ascendant. And of course, in the commander format, we very regularly have more than 30 life because we start at 40. So if you can get this guy out early in the game, and of course, if it's your commander, that's not very difficult. You're probably going to have more than 30 life, so it will immediately flip. And when it does, it becomes a legendary enchantment, Rune Tail's Essence. Prevent all damage that we be dealt to creatures you control. So there's so much fantastic stuff going on here. That's why I ended up putting at number one, even though most people might think that's a weird choice. You can put this card in any deck. I know a lot of people like to put this in life gain decks, but it's very easy to have more than 30 life. You don't need a life gain deck here. Any deck you can throw this in and it will flip immediately if you got 30 or more life. It then becomes an enchantment, which of course is a lot harder to get off the battlefield. A lot of decks have issues dealing with enchantments and it's preventing all damage that would be dealt to creatures you control that is really really good in the commander format first of all the combat damage so now you can just attack and block at will with your creatures and never have to worry about losing them to combat damage you just throw them at your opponents or just chump all day with your creatures if your opponents are attacking you you never have to worry about combat damage but you don't have to worry about any other damage as well your opponent cast a blasphemous act your creatures are fine they're not going to take any damage for that blasphemous act in fact I think Rune Tail is a fantastic fit in any Boros deck for that reason. Your board wipes, a lot of them are going to be damage based like Blasphemous Act or Chain Reaction. So having a Rune Tail in your deck means it now becomes a one-sided board wipe because those spells aren't going to be dealing any damage to your creatures. That is a really powerful ability of preventing all damage that would be dealt to the creatures you control. It covers a lot of bases. And again, because it's a legendary enchantment, it can be really tough for your opponents to get this off the table. I think this is a fantastic card in a commander deck and that's why i chose it as number one but what would you guys choose as number one from this set of all the cards from seniors of kamigawa what is the best one you think for the commander format let me know in the comments below but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in